today we are going to do our very first virtual lab using the platform Gizmos. So we are going to start off with a photosynthesis lab. So you're going to need two things. First, this document right here. Your, this is going to be your Gizmos photosynthesis lab report. And the next is you are going to need to log into Gizmo. So you could click this link right here. I linked it in the top and you can go ahead and sign into Gizmos. I am already signed in, but if you are not signed in already and you still need to enroll, you need to enroll first. Majority of you guys did enroll last week, but there are still a couple of you guys that I missed. So if you need to enroll, make sure you enroll using the codes. But if not, you can go ahead and log in. Your username is your student ID number. Some of you guys have student ID plus your initials and your password should be your birthday. Once you guys log in, you should go to a home screen that looks something similar to this. So you have your photosynthesis lab and then you have the option to launch. But before we launch, I want to go over the lab first, just so you guys can see what we are gonna do today. First, I have highlighted your vocabulary. So your vocabulary is highlighted in this purple highlighter and you could see that throughout the entire document. Some vocab words that you guys are going to see pop up throughout the document are carbon dioxide, chlorophyll, glucose, nanometer, photosynthesis, and wavelength. We're gonna start off with accessing some prior knowledge, just two quick little questions. Then we're gonna go through a quick little gizmos warm up. So basically it's, it's gonna get you comfortable with using the virtual lab. On the second page, you are going to run some tests. So you're going to do the first activity using these very specific instructions. And once you're done doing a lab report on that, you are going to do your second activity. And you are going to do that activity using these specific instructions. And after those two activities, you're done. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, let's launch our gizmo. So go ahead and launch that. And it's easiest I have realized to separate your tabs so you can see both on your screen. That's how I found it's easiest. So we can pay attention to both, okay? So let's start with this first question on your lab report. So prior knowledge, do these before using the gizmo. To survive, what gas do we as humans need to breathe in? Where is this gas produced? So go ahead and take a couple seconds to fill in those answers for the, both of those questions. And your answers are gonna always go in the orange boxes. So take some time to answer those two questions. To survive, what gas do we need to breathe in? And where is that gas produced? Now that we got those questions out of the way, you can do the gizmos warm up. So during photosynthesis, Plants use the energy from sunlight to produce glucose from carbon dioxide and water. Glucose is a sugar that plants use for their own energy. A product of photosynthesis is oxygen. Plants release oxygen as waste. In the photosynthesis lab gizmo, we are going to monitor the rate of photosynthesis by measuring how much oxygen is produced. Observe the lab. What do you think the bubbles are? So here we are on our Gizmos lab. If we change anything, we start to see little bubbles. 
What are those bubbles? Go ahead and answer that in question one. Question two. Now it's giving us a little bit of direction. Select the bar chart tab. On the graph, notice the oxygen production bar. Move the light intensity slider back and forth. How does light intensity affect oxygen production? So we are going to come over to our Gizmos lab and click the tab up here that says bar chart. And here we have O2 flow, which is the oxygen production represented by this blue bar. And our document is telling us to move the light intensity back and forth. So in our lab, here is light intensity. So we can move it, make the light intensity almost turn off, or we can turn up that light super bright. So as we move our light intensity to off and super bright, what is it doing to our oxygen flow over here? What is it doing to that oxygen bar? How does light intensity affect the levels of oxygen? Go ahead and answer that in question two. Question three. Experiment with the vertical temperature slider and the CO2 level slider. So it's asking us three questions. A, how does temperature affect oxygen production? So we're gonna start to mess with our temperature. So as temperature goes up, what happens to the oxygen level? It's coming back to the middle. And as temperature goes down, what happens to the oxygen level? So what would you describe that as? Go ahead and answer that in 3A. Now, let's observe CO2 levels. So we can change the amount of CO2 with this slider. So what happens to oxygen flow as CO2 levels drop? And then let's observe what happens to oxygen flow as CO2 levels rise to as much as possible. What does the oxygen flow doing? Go ahead and describe that in question 3B. C. How does oxygen production relate to the rate of photosynthesis? So what does oxygen level have to do with the rate of photosynthesis? Why are we looking at oxygen level and not anything else? We want to know the rate of photosynthesis. Basically, how much a plant is photosynthesizing. So why are we looking at oxygen level specifically? Answer that in question 3C. Once you guys are done, we can move on to our first activity. So before we do anything, we need to make sure that our gizmo is perfect. It, so in order to do that, we are going to make sure that the bar chart is selected. It is. And we need to turn on the numerical values. So we're going to come over here and click this box right here. So now we got numerical values. Before we start, you guys are going to make a hypothesis. So during photosynthesis, sunlight is used to break apart carbon dioxide and water and reform them 
into glucose and oxygen molecules. Here is the specific formula. So six carbon dioxide molecules, six water molecules, and sunlight meet up, start photosynthesis. The sunlight helps break apart the bonds holding the carbon dioxide and the water together. They rebond in a different way, forming one glucose molecule and six oxygen molecules. So before we start anything, I want you guys to take a guess. In the gizmo, what light intensity and carbon dioxide level do you think will maximize the rate of photosynthesis? So what levels do you think the light intensity and the carbon dioxide levels should be at in order to produce the most oxygen? Go ahead and write that in question one. Question two, now you guys are actually going to play around and figure out how much oxygen can you get out of this plant. So our goal is to get it as high as possible, but only under these, only using these three factors. So you are uh, able to adjust temperature. You are able to adjust light intensity and you're able to adjust CO2 levels. So I want you guys right now to play with all of the sliders and try to figure out how to get the maximum number of oxygen flow. One way to test the perfect conditions is to change each variable slightly and just one at a time. So the best thing you can do is just slightly go a little bit, try to see where you can get the most at out of each slider. And once you get the max, write each of the units in the table in question two. So the temperature would be the degrees up here. The light intensity will be the percentage. The CO2 level will be the parts per million. And then your oxygen production will be the number at the top of the blue bar. So go ahead and try to figure out what is the max number you could get that oxygen level to go to. Now that you found the ideal conditions for this plant, I want you guys to take a minute to think about what just happened. First question, why do you think temperature is such a sensitive factor? So temperature has like this sweet spot. Either it's really bad, has a little bit of good moments, and then it gets really bad again. So why do you think temperature is such a sensitive factor? Go ahead and answer that in 3A. B, why would it be hard to find the ideal CO2 level if the light intensity was very low? So you could practice that. You can turn the light intensity very low. Why is it hard to find a good CO2 factor? Why do you think CO2 isn't having that big of effect on it anymore? Go ahead and write your answer in 3B. We're ready to move on to activity B. So in order to start this activity, we need to get our gizmo set up. So we gotta do a whole bunch of things right now. So the first thing we're gonna do is select the color tab and the bar chart tab at the top. So here is our, 
Here is our simulator. We need to select color at the top, and then we need to make sure that bar chart is selected at the top. So we got that done. Now we need to change some factors. Set the temperature to 24 degrees Celsius. So slide your temperature up to 24. Change the light intensity to 90%. So slide that slider all the way to 90% exactly. And change the CO2 level to 1,000 parts per million. So that's all the way. Once you got it completely all the way, you are ready to start. So a quick little introduction. Plants have a special structure called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is located in the chloroplast. Chlorophyll's job is to absorb sunlight to use it for photosynthesis. <laughs> Chlorophyll is what gives plants their green color. So knowing that, now we're going to talk a little bit more about color. What color of light is the best for photosynthesis? First, we're going to observe. The color of a light wave is determined by its wavelength. On the color tab, slowly drag the light wavelength slider back and forth and observe the effect of oxygen production. How does color of light affect the rate of photosynthesis? So we're gonna come over here to our simulator and we're gonna take a look. See, as you can see in the very center, the light right now is green. As we slide it towards the blues and purples, It increases a little and then decreases back down. Now we're gonna slide it to the more brighter colors, the yellows and oranges and reds. And it goes back up and then back down again. So, take a guess. Why do you think the color of light affects the rate of photosynthesis? Go ahead and answer that in question one. Question two. Now it's time for your hypothesis. Which color of light do you think will maximize the rate of photosynthesis? So now we're going to play around with the color slider. Now we're going to see what color of the light will get us the highest amount of oxygen. So tell me, which color produces the maximum amount of oxygen? Go ahead and answer that in question two. And our last question, think and discuss. When we look at a leaf, we see the colors of light that are reflected off of its surface. So when we look at leaves, we typically see green. Why do you think green is so bad at helping a plant produce oxygen? Why do you think that because plants are green, it makes it a bad color to help with photosynthesis? Take a guess and answer in question three. Is it you guys? Please make sure you turn in this document using Google Classroom. Once you guys turn in this document, I will have access to it and you guys have successfully completed your first virtual simulation. Great job, you guys.